What up, this is Steve from Outside Studios. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a clear, in-depth understanding of what trauma and low vibration energy is and how to recognize it within yourself and in others. Because before you can ever change anything, you first have to be aware of it. I always say this. And awareness always precedes change. This video is gonna be that first step to any major transformation in terms of raising your vibration or just removing that negative energy. So let's get started. So right off the bat, you'll see in many animals that they actually process and clear trauma naturally, like on their own. If a zebra gets like chased from a lion and manages to escape, the first thing they do, like after they get somewhere safe, is they'll just like literally shake it off. Like they'll shake off that trauma energy. They're shaking off all that excess energy from being in that traumatic situation. And it's not only just zebras, like I think swans do this too, or ducks. This is a natural uh, occurrence in the animal kingdom. But as humans, humans we don't do that. Nobody ever taught us to do this, okay? We don't know that we store trauma in our body. So what, it, what happens is that this trauma energy actually stays trapped within us, in, in our body. Somewhere in our muscles is tension, or maybe as a thought that keeps replaying over and looping in our heads. Because what you have is you have this energy body, and this energy body has trauma in it, like almost like little holes in our energy body. And this trauma wants to be fed, so it brings in low vibration energy to help put, put you in situations so you can re-experience that trauma, so that we can finally process it. So we have trauma, and it sounds like a very charged word, like something that only someone who's been through war would experience, or like a physical abuse, someone like that been through that would experience. But the truth is, we all have trauma. Trauma is, is all based on perspective. So as a kid, when you're physically vulnerable and you're fully dependent on your parents for, for survival, then things like being yelled at by your parents and teachers can be traumatic. Getting lost in a grocery store can be traumatic or getting laughed at in front of a classroom. Because in that classroom, as a kid, that's like your entire world. I was actually one time lost in a mall in a random country, well not a random country, but my parents were visiting China and I was lost in this Chinese mall. It was the scariest experience. But even something like that can be traumatic. As children, we survive based off of that quantity and quality of attention that we receive from our caregivers and our parents during the initial learning stage. If our parents don't take care of us, we will die. If we cry and nobody comes to check up on us, that's a very real threat to us. And our parents, they did the best that they could, okay? Like, be grateful for your parents. But they also ultimately had some of that heavy energy within them that, that their parents had given them. And they ultimately also passed it on to us, okay? So we have to understand that this whole cycle of low vibration energy, whatever you want to call it, is being passed along and until we decide to break the cycle or release it on our own, it will stay within us and we will pass it on to our children. But here's what's really strange and scary. The most traumatic events that we experience as kids, like the ones that hit us the hardest, we are most likely not even aware of it. Potentially, we might not even remember it. Why? Because we purge that memory. As children, when we get overwhelmed and something traumatic happens to us, we tend to just dissociate. Like We will purge it out of our memory, out of our conscious mind. But the thing is, it stays with us, again, in our bodies and in our subconscious mind, which is way more powerful than our conscious mind because it affects us to a much greater degree. So what does this trauma do? For one, it, uh, again, like I mentioned about how when you're a kid and you get in a traumatic experience, you, dis you tend to get dissociative. To, to the degree that we've been traumatized as children, we can be more or less dis dissociative. So on the extreme end, someone who's been heavily traumatized will be in that state of dissociationist. Oh, what? No. Dis they will tend to be like dissociative, like permanently almost, like on the extreme end. On the less extreme end, it, it might be someone who finds it hard to concentrate on things. Like, I I know Dr. Gabor Mate, he says uh, in one of this interview that I read, he, he talks about how many people diagnosed ADHD are actually just children who were traumatized and, you know, have, um, um, they just find it very difficult to concentrate. The other thing that trauma does is that it gives us this negative view of the world, okay? And when we have this negative view of the world, instead of an objective view of reality, what tends to happen is we, we might have behaviors such as being overly aggressive, we might be defensive, you know, or we might go the other way and 
have this like grandiose view of ourselves and become narcissistic, okay? It can manifest in many ways. A key tenet to low vibration energy is that it festers in your body gets you contracted into your head so it gets you looping on some sort of thought because when you're in your head, that's where low vibration energy can attack you not when you're present and out of your body the other main thing is that it wants to spread it's literally like a little parasite so what you have to do is you have to uh, purge it out of your body in a way you have to heal your energy body so you don't crave that kind of pain anymore so you don't resonate with it anymore call it low vibration energy, call it adrenal, cortisol, stress chemicals Whatever, call it whatever you want. But there is no denying that there are these different levels of vibration, as uh, the Kabbalion puts it. There are these levels of vibration and you have to, in order to raise your own vibration, you have to let go and heal this energy body of whatever kind of low vibration energy you have. I know this all might sound crazy, but I'm just giving you these ideas so you can observe it in your own life, okay? I always say that in all my videos, but like, Really, most people will not understand this because mainstream media is being run by this parasitic energy we, that we all think it's normal now. Like, it's so simple. Look around you, look at what's popular, look at what's selling, look at the type of food that's popular. What kind of realm are we in right now? Look around you. Wake up! Because this hellish, disgusting energy has managed to find its way into our food supply, in the things that we consume on the internet in the pollutants that we put in our bodies. This energy is outwardly manifested as genocides and wars. That's why I'm so riled up on this. It's like the same low vibration energy that is found in a cigarette, that's the same energy that creates atrocities, okay? It's the same energy, just of a different degree. Why do school shootings happen? I'm not gonna act like I have all the answers to this shit, because I don't, but if you choose to look at things through this lens, a lot of things might stop making sense. People in high vibration, people who can laugh and have fun with their friends, who are you know, in the moment, spreading that love, sharing positivity, happiness, they're not going around shooting people. People who've been abused before. Their abusers have almost always also been abused and they're just passing along that dark energy. These extreme examples are all meant to just shine a spotlight on what's already inside of you. Like, it's very easy to see it as I'm describing it, but it's harder to point the mirror to yourself and see that you have the same qualities within you. You're doing the same thing. So notice all the areas in which you're pushing away people that care about you, or where you're engaging in addictive behaviors. All these things are forms of low vibration energy, and I'll get more specific and clear on it for the exercise that I'll take you through in my next video. But for now, just like observe this within yourself, like all these areas where you're spreading low vibration energy, you know, that hate, that, that, that jealousy, that whatever it is, that, ugh, that thing where you just feel contracted in your head or something that just triggers you and then you react. Where, where does that happen? I know I'm just listing all of this horrific shit at you right now and I'm you know talking about terrorism and school shooting and you might be feeling a little overwhelmed right now. You might think, you know, you can't change all of this. But guess what? You can change yourself. It's not your job to save the world and save the masses of people, but you can cultivate that good energy within you and share it with the world. There's very few things in the world that will actually show you how to escape it and, and release and let go of LVE. Instead, what most things do is they pump it. If most people are already in hell, then let me just try to make some money off of it. That's the thought process, unfortunately, for many things. Drugs are so popular because people can't even just let go on their own. We have, to, we, we, we have to numb ourselves or disconnect from our bodies. We can't just release and let go on our own. And it's not even just drugs, it's any form of escapism from reality. We all have some sort of addictive behavior at some point in our lives, probably right now. To heal these wounds in our emotional body. That's all addiction is. Dr. Gabo Mate talks about this in his book, In the Realm of Hungry Ghosts. I'm not trying to condemn anything, okay? Everything is perfect just as it is. Like the world is truly a beautiful place. It's always been a mess, but it's perfect. Like it really is a beautiful place. But for many people, it's not. And I don't blame them. If you're someone who needs real concrete evidence before they can just believe something like this, which I can completely understand by the way, like I'm a pretty objective person too. So if you're someone like that, then I would just suggest you to go out and do an act of charity for a whole day. Like volunteer your time helping someone and don't tell anyone about it and see how you feel. 
And then the next day, go out and be completely self-absorbed. And then see how you feel, okay? Very simple. You just take that to its logical conclusion and you'll start to get a clearer picture on what this whole energy thing is. It will become so obvious what this whole thing is, what this matrix is. Your thoughts will follow the energy. So if you're fueled in negative energy, your thoughts will reflect that. The parasite is running you. Likewise, if you're someone who's more optimistic, more positive, then your life will reflect that as well. So that's why I think in a lot of these religions, when they talk about heaven and hell, it's not just some random, you know, it's not some place that you go after you die. It's the world that you cultivate here on earth. That is your heaven or hell. Low vibration energy attacks us through six main modalities. Lack of approval, lack of control, lack of safety, not knowing what's gonna happen, self attack, and attachment, okay? So think of it like six different entry points in which low vibration energy can find a way inside of you and attack you. And we've all been attacked by it before, okay? Eckhart Tolle calls it a pain body attack. You can, it can be something, you know, very overt, like when you just get triggered and, and it's like an outburst. Or it can be a little bit more subtle, like when you're poison dripping someone or when you're being passive aggressive, something like that. By the way, when we get triggered, we often wanna just dump this energy off onto someone else to make us feel better. So the parasite can jump off of us and latch onto someone else. But often what happens is that, you know, they'll, that'll just trigger them and it'll go jump back, back and forth, just like in an argument. And look, I get triggered too. Like I can get in a bad mood as well. I'm human. We're all on our journey. In fact, there isn't anything inherently wrong with LVE. I know I'm talking about this like it's the worst thing, but it's honestly kind of, it's normal. It's natural. It, you sh it's not something you should resist. As long as you know how to release it and let go, you're fine, which is what I'm gonna get through in my next video. You are an energetic being. So you can either be a host for positive energy or for negative energy. And of course, it's not black or white. Like one is gonna be more dominant than the other. But if you are someone, if you're someone who wants to learn how to release and let go of low vibration energy, make sure you subscribe because in my next video, I'm gonna be talking about, I'm gonna go through a specific exercise slash meditation on releasing LVE. And if you learned something from this video, make sure you like the video as well because, you know, support your boy. I'll really appreciate it. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video, man. Peace.